goodbye to eyes as old as yours, my friend. Not your everyday place to be taking a video. So yeah, very cool. Bit of a privilege. I'm gonna climb up here into this nest now. I'm not gonna go too deep, I'm not gonna disturb anything. But uh, Isambella have asked us to collect some samples. So I can see a little brown feather there. I'm hoping that's gonna be a bearded vulture feather. So yeah, somewhere where not many people get to go. And uh, the more unsavory sample at the back there, let's grab some, some guano and we'll use that for DNA testing. There we go, right up in it. One of the only bearded vulture nests in the world. Um, there looks like there's some other little red feathers over that side that could be bearded vulture. That could also be something else that's just come and sat up here. But I've grabbed some of this uh, guano. And yeah, got a, got a few samples. I'm pretty sure that's an owl feather or something. But I just thought it looked quite cool. Um, I might grab one or two more samples. And then it's going to be out of here. Time to get going. My name is Quinn Clark. Um, I'm the program manager for Endlove Aerial Trust. Uh, we're a South African non-profit organization that focuses obviously very much on, on conservation and <clears throat> integrating new technologies um, that will uh, enhance traditional conservation methods. For instance, the project that we was running at the moment, we're sitting up here at, on, um, uh, in Cobham Nature Reserve. Uh, 2,500 meters above sea level, and we was installing a um, high definition camera system into a bearded vulture's nest. Now we're doing this for a couple of reasons. Um, the first reason is to really give researchers and conservationists a far better idea of bearded vulture behavior during the, the breeding season. Um, a second thing that we really want to do as well is create a greater awareness, uh, public awareness of the bearded vulture and and its plight. You know, if you look in the last 40 years, um, the populations decreased from 2,200 individuals to less than 400. And of those 400, less than 100 of them are actually breeding pairs. So it's getting to the point that the population is not going to be able to sustain itself. So what the researchers and conservationists would be able to get out of having real-time monitoring on the nest is when the vultures actually lay an egg um, one of those eggs can be harvested and hand reared and then released the reason that the conservationists want to do that is uh, bearded vultures practice something called canonism where the dominant chick will actually kill the, the, the submissive chick but by harvesting the one egg before both eggs hatch you double the chances of uh, the full full clutch actually happen, uh, hatching and, and, and being raised to adulthood. Um, yeah, and, and like I was saying that we want to bring the bearded vulture into the, to the public's attention. You know, th there's so much emphasis placed on those big charismatic anim animals like black rhino and elephants and, and Yes, of course, they need to be preserved. They need to. They, their populations are under a lot of pressure. But we can't forget the other species that are also <clears throat> thre threatened. Sorry, I just need to right. take this. Simon? Simpy, one and Simpy, yes, 
Ubani benga chinja mabu besi Kimpi Bonansi mpieza Ubani benga chinja mabu besi Kimpi Bonansi mpieza Ubani benga chinja mabu besi Yes, I.